Um, and, and just, I, I'll go to John Buchanan. Um, and, and from your experience, you know, coming from a slightly different angle uh, through, through, you know, biotech, and, and just your broad view of the aquaculture industry in general. Do, what, what challenges do you think remain out there for land-based um, to become mainstream and really a big part of the um, aquaculture volume produced globally each year? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So you, you could argue it's already become mainstream. There's lots of discussions, investment and, and activity in the sector. The, you know, the big uh, commitments initially were around engineering and that's still a major focus and, and feeds obviously has to be a, a focus that the way the diets are formulated is quite different and needs to be optimized for RAS. The, the last step in the in the puzzle and, not, and not from my perspective is looking at the genetics of the fish. The RAS is a very capital intensive investment. The economics are very well understood and once you get to scale then investment in improving the fish is makes sense and i think that we're approaching that point especially for salmon but many of the species where you know an improvement in growth as you're moving fish through the tanks there's always the, the while you're waiting for the biomass to grow there's the inefficiency there that can be recaptured with faster growing fish just very simply but obviously you know better fcr or the waste products from the fish that allow a biofilter to support a larger biomass would be fundamentally transformative to the industry and the profitability and we've done some work in my in my past i was the director of r d for aqua bounty so there was a, we was looking at biotech solutions to solve those problems they can be addressed through breeding and there's new technologies in genome editing and ras is also contained so that there's a lot of benefits to really taking the next step in the industry and getting the genetics to complement both the feeds and the engineering that's a that's a good opportunity for the future um, and, and I'll, I'll move to, to John Buchanan. Uh, we, we do have a couple of questions that are more on the on the technical aspects of uh, RAS farming. And um, I, I think what, one of the interesting questions, uh, I mean, there are several, but I'll start with one. Um, on the aspect of feed, um, what species has the highest um, FCR ratio or feed conversion ratio in a, in a RAS environment? Do you have a view on that? Sure. So I, I, I guess, first of all, FCR is a very difficult uh, assessment to make. It depends on the amount of energy that goes into the feed and, and what's calculated. And it's quite different across different species. So it's probably not a simple answer to that. Uh, if we go back to economics, you know, where has the feed been developed to be most efficient and used by the fish? And then importantly for RAS as well, is how is the feed utilized? Is the protein in the feed going into muscle? As opposed to being broken down into energy, which produce waste, which puts a load on the filter. So the most advances in, in scredding can come as well, but most advances have been in salmon feeds for RAS. I think that's where the, the most uh, where we are most technical technologically ahead. But the same concepts can be applied to any of the emerging species. So really, it's a it's a matter of selecting the fish, uh, you, and you can have a, a selective program to improve FCR by breeding. Or by genome editing, or other, or for example, Aqua Bounty, the technology they have improves the FCR by 10 to 15 percent over conventional salmon. So there's advantages you can have in the genetics of the fish, and advantages you can make in the feeds. And and we're still at the early stages, so probably not a clear answer there. But it's going to be a case by case basis. Yeah, and and actually, just a quick follow on question. Um, one of the um, the lingering doubts about land-based systems is the off taste and you know how it, uh, uh, some of the solutions that that you guys look at as an r d center do you look at this area and do you think that the land-based um technologies to date have overcome this problem so we, we have looked at that and been part of some research there my feeling again is probably most advanced in in salmon but yes i think there's a fundamental understanding of the causes of off flavor and ways to address it in ras I don't have a lot of that's that's an ongoing area of research, but I feel like we're over the hump in that space. Um, John, I'm going to give you a question that's come in about um, intersystems, and it's quite an interesting uh, question. There's a lot of buzz around the you know the the um, the sort of mixed aquaculture um, um, trophic systems. And forgive me that I've forgotten the exact words that that make the acronym, but. Um, what do you um, what, what do you make of uh, 
could, could there be some sort of um, way of fusing these two technologies with, with, with um, intersystems? Do you mean multitrophic aquaculture? I do, multitrophic, yes, yeah. exactly, aquaculture systems. So it's a, it's a great question. I, so I'm not an expert in the area, but you know, been around some research and in the end, you know, some colleagues that were working in building complicated systems, linking tilapia and vegetables, and they, they found the best solution was to grow the tilapia in one tank, collect the waste, and then fertilize the vegetables. So, so maybe not fully linked, but RAS does give us the opportunity to recapture most of the waste and repurpose it. And that's just my opinion, but I see that as a really exciting and um, benefit to the technology more so than, than linking them together, which there's potential there as well. But at the most basic level, recapturing the waste and repurposing it is, is something that we can definitely do. Right. And what, what, do you, what do you make of aquaponic systems where we've seen companies such as Superior Fresh, you know, building these models? Do, do you think that will really take off where, where the aquaculture component is kind of integrated into another food system? So it's, this would be more of a personal opinion, but I certainly hope so. And, and I, I hope they're successful. It's a great, it's a great concept. And I think as, as we spoke earlier, you know, they're pioneering the way and you know, there'll be bumps along the way, but if there's a way to get it done, you know, there's people out there that are working on it. So I look forward to those results and it's a, it's a great idea. Right, right. And, and, and just a quick follow on question, if I may, um, there's, there's a couple of questions about the sustainability of land based systems, uh, the, the fossil fuel, fuel usage. Um, what, what, what do you, you know, when you, when you take a high level view of aquaculture and you look at the contrasting systems, how do you think the RAS systems compare on sustainability metrics? Yeah, so I think it's highly competitive, especially if it's local, because so much of our seafood is is transported around the globe. So that RAS gives us the opportunity to locate facilities near consumption, which is, uh, you know, an obvious win. And the other part there is the world moves to more sustainable forms of energy. You know, RAS becomes a much more much more sustainable because energy is the major input there. So I think it's a winning technology in that regard. And finally, John, just uh, keen to ask you the same question, but also a twist on that question as well. Um, just in terms of where you see the most capital deployed to aquaculture technologies, you, you, you have a presence around the world. I'm just keen to get your view on where you see aquaculture evolving the fastest or it's progressing the quickest. As from, from a RAS perspective, uh, it's still, at least in my opinion, from our experience, European and North American focused and of course Israel is a big player there as well and there's tons of development in China as well and so in and, and Southeast Asia around shrimp production but I think it's a at this point global in terms of the uh, interest and the investment going into you know building production systems and then and, and also into research so global scope at this point is what my answer is yeah, that's great. Do, do, do you think, uh, you know, very small final question, do, do you think that these systems can really sort of, you know, uh, fulfill the wider mission of, of um, feeding the world? Or do you think it's more of a kind of niche, high value uh, species opportunity? I think that, I, so I can't remember who's, I think Ohad said this earlier, but we're, we view it as another tool in the toolbox and we need all the tools that we can find to feed the world. I don't think this is a replacement for anything. I think this is this is filling a, a way to grow the industry. Um, and there's certain areas where net pin, farm, net pin farming still makes sense or pond farming makes sense in certain areas where RAS will definitely be the solution. And having this ability only increases the, the flexibility of the industry to help solve problems and, and feed people.